Jada Coleman <laughs> takes ball one from Gutierrez. Sitlali on the season 10 and 0 with a 144 earned run average. This is her 17th start on the season. 78 innings of work. This is a deep Texas staff for Mike White for the second consecutive year. One on the count to Coleman, senior center fielder. Two for five in the tournament with a home run, has walked a couple of times and scored four runs. One and two to the Oklahoma leadoff hitter at 397 on the season. Her average has slipped below the 400 mark. 10 for her last 40 at the plate over the last 13 games. The one two from Gutierrez misses. Two and two. Jada Coleman's still a player at the top of this Oklahoma lineup that's going to bring the energy day in and day out. It just seems like the rest of the team feeds off of what she brings in that leadoff position. Trying to get a feel for the strike zone here with Sid Lally working more down in the zone. Slap foul by Coleman. Even though Coleman's average has slipped under the 400 mark, she still gets on base at a very high clip, number one on the team in on-base percentage. A threat to steal if she gets on, 53 career stolen bases, five-game hitting streak for her. For this Oklahoma team, after dropping two of three to Oklahoma State, one game three of that series, ground ball off the first baseman, looking for it, not able to find it is the freshman Katie Stewart. And the leadoff is aboard for Oklahoma. The defense has been an area that's been improved for Texas from last season to this season. But this is a big mistake here to start off this ball game for Texas. A ground ball over to Katie Stewart, who is playing back behind first base. She almost gets caught in between on that second long hop. An error over there to start off the ball game and a runner reaching base. 53 errors for Texas on the season. Defense is good, could be a little bit tighter. 965 fielding percentage on the year for the number one team in the country. Yeah, I felt last year looking at their season, their errors seemed to come in bunches. There would be games where they had five errors, three errors. This year it seems a little bit more spread, spread out. But when you're facing Oklahoma, they are going to grasp onto any opportunity you give them. Parker with a slow roller on the right side. And Parker running fast down the line, beats it out. First and second to get things started for the Sooners here in the first. Oklahoma just putting the ball in play and making something happen. This is a play that's not going to go down as an error in the scorebook, but you have to charge this one harder. You have to get that ball over to first base quicker. <laughs> Ella Parker known for her power, but she motors down this first baseline, hustles straight out of the box, definitely beats that one out. Slow developing ground ball over at second base. She tried to flip it over, and she just flat out beats that one out. I like to see the smile on her face down the first base. You know, she's six for seven now in the tournament. Most of the other hits have been a little bit harder hit than that one. <laughs> a little bit. They made it to the other warning track beyond the warning track out in the center field. Here is T.R.A. Jennings. Ball one. Jennings two for four in the tournament with a couple of walks and three runs scored. 0 for two yesterday in the semifinal win over BYU. 13-2 and five was the final in that Oklahoma win. This is hit well the right field and deep and is carrying back and it is off the wall. Coleman being waved around. It's a run scoring double for Jennings and Oklahoma comes out firing here in the first. This is exactly what this Sooner offense wants to do to opponents. They want to get on base and then they want to set to the table for hitters like Tiare Jennings. This is a drop ball down in the zone and she just gets her barrel underneath it, behind it, drives it the opposite way out to that right field wall. That one's going to score Jada Coleman easily from second base. Time being called here. But there have been times where they don't exactly look like textbook Oklahoma softball. Ball one to Alyssa Brito. Mentioned Gutierrez beat Oklahoma earlier this season. That was game two of the series. Great series. Won by Texas. Took two out of three. Gave up just six hits in one run. Gutierrez. 
in a jam here in the first. Second and third, nobody out. There's a strike, and it's 1-1 to Brito. She did give up a run in the first inning in that start that she had against the Sooners earlier this year. Really settled in after that first inning. Sure did. Didn't block anybody, struck out two. That ended Oklahoma's 40-game winning streak in Big 12 play. One and two now to Brito, who's at 418 now in the season. Lots of pops, 16 home runs, 54 runs batted in. Had a strong semifinal showing, three for three, with three runs scored and two runs batted in. The one two from Gutierrez. Two and two. You gotta be really careful where you throw drop balls to Alyssa Brito up at the plate because she is one of the best drop ball hitters in the country. So far this year, she has eight home runs on the drop ball, and that leads Division One. Four for five in the tournament with four runs batted in. Out of play. Chance to add to that total here in the first. We mentioned seven straight run rule wins for Texas, but now running into an Oklahoma team finding their stride here in the postseason. 11 extra base hits with runners in scoring position. Gutierrez gets a big strikeout, one away. Challenges her with this drop ball low and inside, and this pitch was really efficient because it's got a bit of arm side run to it as well. It's dropping down in the zone, but it's also working in on the hands of the right-handed batters, trying to get behind and underneath that one, and Brito's not able to do that enough. And the first strikeout and the first out of this inning. And now here comes the leading hitter for this Oklahoma team, Kinsey Hansen. Ball one. Hanson three for five in the tournament with three runs batted in. <laughs> one on one. Good spot on that low and outside corner. That's a call that Sitlali Gutierrez definitely wants to have. When you're facing this Oklahoma lineup, you want to make sure you're working the edges of the zone, trying to keep the ball in the ballpark. Here's the 1-1. One -one. Grounded, stopped by the third baseman, looking for the tag. Great play by Vivi Martinez. They will get the out at second. A run does score, but perhaps preventing a second run is Martinez, two down. RBI number 32 for Hanson. It's a great play by Vivi Martinez. Hit deep into that 5-6 hole. Very smart to know that that run at third base was going to score easily. She throws it to third, gets into a bit of a rundown. I guarantee Tiara Jennings here thought that this was going to be a base hit through to the left side. No problem. A nice snag there to get it out on that play. Popped up on the infield by Pickering. Drifting back and getting it as Washington to retire the side. So Oklahoma plates two, Texas coming to the. Definitely going to need her again if they want to try to climb back in this ball game. But they're going to have to face a veteran in the Big 12 in Kelly Maxwell, the senior member of the All Big 12 first team. Ashton Maloney steps in for Texas to lead things off for the regular season champions in the Big 12. And she starts off with a ground ball to Terry Jennings, one pitch. One away here in the first. Maxwell, Big 12 first team selection. Second start in the tournament. Started the quarterfinal against Kansas. Went five in that game. What can we expect today? She has incredible movement on her pitches in a variety of different locations. She's going to mix her speeds. And because of that, because she's able to get ahead, she has a very high swing and miss rate. A lot of batters chase after the pitches up and out of the zone. Her ability to get ahead of batters, too, that's going to be key for Maxwell going up against Texas. Try to get ahead, and once you're able to do that, expand outside of the zone to get Texas swinging out, outside of it. Strike one to Mia Scott. Now Devin Count 0 2. Four 400 hitters in the lineup for this Texas team, including Mia Scott. 
419 on the season. First team selection in the Big 12. There's a the ball. Scott, three for six. Couple of home runs already in the tournament. Four runs batted in. Texas with wins over Texas Tech, 13-4 and five innings. And then Baylor last night, 14-3 and five innings. Nine total home runs so far in the tournament. Swing and a miss. Two away for Maxwell in the first. You can see even in just that at bat, throwing a variety of speeds, variety of locations coming out of her hand. It looks like this is going to be a pitch that stays about belt high, but that's the rise ball. It's going up in the zone and away from the lefty Mia Scott. That pitch way outside of the zone, but already you can tell that her pitches are moving by that swing and miss. Ball one to Vivi Martinez, sophomore shortstop. Second team all-conference selection, three for six in the tournament with three runs batted in. Two and oh. Maxwell gave up two hits in her five innings of work against Kansas in the quarterfinal. Did give up two runs. As a staff in the tournament, Oklahoma with a ERA of 2-1-0. 4-3 score that, and it's a one. It's going to be of Oklahoma teams that we've seen of late, but they are really starting to turn it on here at the end of the season. And I really do think it's a, a product of them having some games where they're not putting every facet of the game together. You look at the Louisiana loss, which was their first loss of the season. Defense not as sharp in those games. When they lost the series to Texas, they just weren't getting the offense and the timely hitting that we're used to seeing from them. And this past weekend against Oklahoma State, maybe the pitching wasn't there. Foul ball off the bat of Alita Torres, down in the count 0-2. In that game three against Oklahoma State, though, it really felt like they started to put things together and then carried that into this Big 12 tournament. The offense is starting to fire up. You see them already putting up early runs in this ball game. That's something that this team's going to need to continue to do in this postseason. 0-2 to Torres sends that foul. I just think that the pressure that Oklahoma plays with, and we touched on this with Patty Gasso, when you go 61 and one like they did last year, when you have a 71 game winning streak ended this year that carried over from last year, when you've won three straight national championships, anything but winning a national championship is going to feel, especially for these upperclassmen, like, oh, it's not as good as last year. And that is such a hard place to be. Torres with a strikeout, one away here in the second. Isn't that, I mean, imagine playing with that pressure. It, it, I, I don't know what it's like to play with that pressure because I've never won three national championships in a row and come into my senior year trying to repeat that or forepeat that, I should say. And this is a game where you're going to have to deal with failure and the senior class just hasn't dealt with a ton of failure because they've won pretty much every single game that they've stepped on the field to compete in. And so six losses on the year probably feels like a lot to this team and they're having to navigate some of those feelings along with just being a senior in general. But I do think that they, they almost seem to be playing with a, a lot less weight on their shoulders in the past couple of games. Sidney Sanders takes the ball. It's one and one, so the number eight hitter for Oklahoma, 0 for 2 in the tournament. I must say, you're a multiple-time All-American. That was All-American analysis because our director, Johnny Hanna, was putting on some of the best dressed fans here at the game here today. You just went, you went right through it. You just stuck with your analysis. You did not flinch one bit. You know, I tried I to segue. I believe Minnie Mouse was at the game and you just kept going. I did try to segue the costume into my analysis, but I am not that next level to where I could swerve in those two. You're not Oklahoma level no, yet? No, nope, not quite yeah. there, nope. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. No sun to worry about here today, and hopefully no rain. 76 degrees at first pitch, a little bit muggy, but a nice night here in OKC, fouled off by Sanders. I just want to, one follow-up on the Oklahoma talk, and we've both used the word vulnerable or vulnerabilities. Where are those for Oklahoma? If you are another team in the country, if you're Texas, number one in the country, Oklahoma State got knocked out of this tournament earlier, Tennessee in the SEC, Florida just won the SEC, Duke in the ACC, if you're these teams, that's down low. And you're thinking about 
there's a path to win here on this field in June for a national championship. Where are those areas where Oklahoma may not be where they were in the past? It, my mind goes to the pitching, and they, they have great pitchers, but they're not your dominant strikeout pitchers that we're used to seeing from Ooh. them. As Sid Lolly now has two strikeouts in this <laughs> inning. And the defensive player of the year, Reese Atwood, <laughs> sailed the throw to Mia Scott to try to throw it around the horn, instead they're throwing it around the outfield horn, two down. Working that off-speed drop ball. In there, you can see just how far out in front Sidney Sanders is on that swing. And I do think you're seeing, with, with Kelly Maxwell out there in the circle for Oklahoma, she she's going to be more of your strikeout type of pitcher. She's going to go out there and get a ton of swings and misses out of the zone. But if I'm an opposing team, that's what I'm looking at. I'm going, how do we put up runs against Oklahoma? Because you know that this offense is going to be able to score. It's a matchup of the top two hitting teams in the country. Texas number one, Oklahoma number two. They can't produce runs. Number nine hitter Riley Boone. One on one the count to the senior left fielder. Hitting better than 400 on the season. A couple of hits in four at bats here in the tournament. Boone was a catalyst, and if you're looking at that game against Oklahoma State to close out the regular season in Bedlam, three for three in that game against the Pokes last Sunday. Second team all-conference selection in the Big 12 this season. Slap to third, Scott on the first, and it's a one, two, three inning for Gutierrez, who has set a in Utah. We've got a big one here in OKC, the Big 12 Championship, part of Championship Saturday. And strike one to Reese Atwood. Atwood, the Big 12 Player of the Year. I've been told her throw to third went off the bat of Sanders. That's why it ended the left field. Yes. The Player of the Year doesn't make mistakes like that. <laughs> Actually, a couple of great catchers side by side right now. You've got Atwood, Player of the Year for Texas, their catcher. and. Kinsey Hanson, the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year, back behind the plate for Oklahoma. Two and one to Atwood, who has had a remarkable season. Hit 291 a season ago, hitting above 430 this season. Two one. Two and two. She's made a couple of changes in regards to her stance from last season. Last season, her front foot was quite a bit more open. This year, she's starting a little bit more closed. And I feel that in combination with the stance and her hand pad, she's been able to cover just a variety of different pitches this year. Hard to get her out up at the plate. Ooh. Really good take on that curveball on the outer half there. I like that spot by Maxwell, too. But during this 18-game win streak, 27 hits, 10 home runs, 33 RBI. She is just an RBI machine so far this season. She has a personal 11-game hitting streak going right now. And a 3-2 pitch coming from Maxwell. That open stance last year, she would almost cut off her swing a bit, starting really open and then stepping all the way across her body. And I think because she's staying a bit more parallel to the batter's box lines, that it's allowed her to cover the inner half and the outside part of the plate. Maxwell wins the battle, one away here in the second. This is where having the spin and the movement in different directions works to Kelly Maxwell's advantage. Reese Atwood looked at a ball that was a curveball on the outside half of the plate earlier in this at bat, and then she goes with the rise ball. So those two different pitches come in looking the same, but break in different directions. That strikeout pitch was that rise ball working up and away from Atwood. Strike one to Katie Stewart. Freshman who plays first base, hitting over 400 on the season. Four for five in the tournament with four runs batted in, including a home run. She has an 18 game on base streak. One on one. 
Almost looked like that curveball got close to hitting Katie Stewart in the box. She stands right up on that chalk line. You can see where her toes right on the edge. One or two. Stewart had a two run home run against Maxwell in game three of the Red River rivalry regular season series. That was back on April 7th, a 2 1 win for Texas. Maxwell pitched a three hitter in winning game one, but then Texas came back with back to back 2 1 wins to take the series in Austin. One two pitch. Two and two. So since that loss to Oklahoma, 18 straight wins for Texas, 25 hits in that span for this freshman. I'd say their offense is doing quite a bit to contribute to that 18 game <laughs> win streak. Three and two. Texas comes in hitting 383 through the first two games of the postseason. That's first in Division I. Hitting better than 490 in the tournament. 78 home runs on the season for the Longhorns. Swung on and missed. Hanson will throw it down to first to retire Stewart. Three strikeouts now for Maxwell, two away. Worked a lot of pitches in that at bat, low and inside to Katie Stewart, probably paying attention to the fact that she's right up on that chop line. This one goes to an off speed down in the zone. Gets her swinging and missing at a pitch. Not even close to the strike zone. Here's senior Jolie Mitchell. Take strike one. Mitchell three for four with a home run. Three runs batted in in the tournament. One of three seniors in the starting lineup for Texas here today. Six freshmen and sophomores for Mike White. Very young team, but they have produced. You see Mike. Sixth season now in Austin, 15th overall. Big 12 coach of the year. Now back in the 22. Had a very young team last year. Pitching staff, most experienced part of what he has in the roster, but man, does he have some talented young players in this lineup. And really threw them into the fire right from the start of the season. Played two games against UCLA, then went to Clearwater where they faced Tennessee and Stanford. Really testing them against some of the best competition across the country early on in this season. One, two to Mitchell. Two and two. And that's part of the unknowns with the young players on a team. You just don't know how they're going to respond when they get into these types of atmospheres. And you can't really practice it until they get thrown into the atmosphere. That goes full to Mitchell. Cat was full to Atwood. Cat was full to Stewart. Maxwell won both those battles with strikeouts. Count now full to Mitchell. And a walk. First base runner of the game for Texas. It's Julie Mitchell with two down here in the second. All three at bats in this inning. You mentioned all the full counts. Every time she's gone to a pitch that's well outside of the strike zone, probably playing on the fact that batters are going to assume that Kelly Maxwell's not going to want to put a runner on by getting a walk. So she, so they think she's going to bring something into the strike zone. And maybe as a batter, you try to guess a little bit that she's going to bring it into the zone. Swing and a miss by freshman Caden Henry, the center fielder. Strike one. 0 for 6 here in the tournament. Caden, member of the all freshman team and second team all conference selection as well. <laughs> Call the strike and it's 0 and 2. Uh, 
ball one. Texas with 47 wins. They went 23 and 4 in the Big 12. Regular season champions outright title for the first time since 2010, looking for their first Big 12 tournament title since 2005. Sharp single up the middle, and it's in the gap. Slamming on the brakes around second was Mitchell. Mitchell now being waved around. Here comes the throw, and she is safe. All the way to third goes Henry, and Texas is on the board. Another freshman coming through for Texas this season. This time it's Caden Henry with a runner over at first base. This play at home was a lot closer than it should have been. She hit this one extremely sharp off of the bat, straight up the middle. Gets all the way out to center field, but you'll notice Jolie Mitchell actually stops at second base and then decides to keep going. Was able to make it into home plate, stand up. Are you surprised that made it all the way to the fence? Because it certainly looked like Jada Coleman was surprised. There must have been some crazy tops in on it because it got by her quickly. She hit it extremely hard off of the bat. I honestly thought it sounded for a minute that she got it off the end of the bat, but she smoked that thing back up the middle. And it just seemed to linger out in center field a long time for Jolie Mitchell to stop at second base and still make it safely to home. So an RBI triple for the freshman, her first hit of the tournament. And here is senior Alyssa Washington. Grounded to the shortstop, Jennings to first for the out to retire the side. But Caden. I think that maybe there's a little bit more behind this one because it's the last time that these two teams will match up in the Big 12. And maybe just because there's another championship on the line between these two teams. Seems a little combo of everything. Just they keep buying more trophy cases. <laughs> Oklahoma has <laughs> spent plenty of money of their budget on trophy cases in Norman, that's for sure. Texas would love to add one to their regular season title. <laughs> Top of the order here for Oklahoma. Coleman leading off, reached on an error and scored in the first. One from Gutierrez. Slap foul and out of play. You know, we did those highlights just to give you an opportunity to editorialize your thoughts on the obstruction rule. So well done. You snuck it in there. I, I did. I did uh, talk about it just briefly, but I also said I was glad that they went to the review and they did not call that obstruction because I thought it was a great relay in from the outfield. Throw took her up the line a bit. But had by a bland out at the plate by a few steps. Just good all around defense right there. Atwood, the anchor on the end to hold on to it to end the game with the tag at the plate. Two and two now to Coleman. Grounded wide of third and foul. Katie Stewart with that home run. Give the series win to Texas. 2.6% strikeout rate. Only five strikeouts so far this season. Make it six. Caught looking. Gutierrez comes inside, one away. Four strikeouts for Sitlali Gutierrez. And here is Ella Parker. Parker reached on an infield single and scored in the first. I love what she had to say after last night's semifinal win. She is playing with an empty mind. Now, <laughs> I've been accused of such. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly the way that you want to play on the field, especially the type of hitter that she is. Why? Why is that so important? There's not enough time in this ball game to explain that answer. Because there's too much but, in yes, your mind. Exactly you have too to... much. It, it, but when you get up there and you start to overanalyze what the pitcher is trying to pitch to you, what sort of pitches you like to hit, what the situation is, how big of a game this means to your team, when all those thoughts start to get into your mind, 
oftentimes maybe you're, you're trying too hard up at the plate. You swing at the wrong pitch. So really it comes down to trying to empty your mind as much as possible. You can see before she steps into the box, she takes that deep breath. And she said that her breathing has actually really helped her in that. Back up the middle and it's a base hit. Two for two for Parker. Seven for eight in her first postseason tournament. You just never get the feeling that the moment is too big for Ella Parker. And maybe it's the breathing, maybe it's the calmness that she brings when she steps into the box. But she just finds a way to get it done. Not a bad pitch, it's low in the zone. But she just pounds this one straight into the ground over the head of Sitlali Gutierrez to try to get something going. That skipped up. Parker will take second on the wild pitch. The extra 60 feet in a close game like this. Going to advance any way that you can. Heads up base running over at first base too. Taken off immediately as soon as she saw that ball skip away from Atwood. Runner in scoring position for Jennings, who has an RBI in this game. 2-0 the count. Looks like Atwood's having a little trouble with the electronic communication, perhaps. Working with the band there on that. Tiare was still in the box ready to hit, though. She was locked in, <laughs> even when Reese Atwood was standing up talking to the home plate umpire. Many teams, not all teams, going to the electronic communication. Wristband where the pitches will be singled in. Looks like they got from the dugout. Can ask a silly question because it happens to me with my watch. Did the battery go dead on the other? I, you know, <laughs> I'm just you have to put it on the charger true, after true. each day. Yeah, I always struggle to get mine on in the morning. Yeah. Oh. There's a strike two and one now to Jennings. 19 home runs for Tiare on the season, 92 in her career. She has been an on-base and extra-base machine. Fouled off two and two. Such good coverage of every part of the zone and a little bit of a subtle change that I feel like I've seen from her swing this year to last year. She's always had her hands load up very low, close to almost her belt when she gets going in her swing. They seem a little bit lower this year but she's still able to handle drop balls, rise balls, curve balls. Out of play. Even inside out of that drop ball inside. All time ranks on the right at Oklahoma and where she stands at the moment. Just picked up career hit number 300 today, fourth all time in the 300 hit club for the Sooners. Just one of those players that's such a great combination of the consistency with the batting average and the amount of hits that she gets, also with the home run power and the run production that she brings day in and day out. Rounded to Scott at third over to first to retire Jennings, holding at second is Parker, two down. Nice play by Mia Scott over at third base. This one hit very sharply off of the bat of Tiare Jennings. Fielded that one very quickly. Made sure to look Parker back to second. Keep the runner at two. Here's Alyssa Brito. Struck out her first time. Down the count 0 and 1. I did not do the research to see if Alyssa has a fan club, but if there was an Alyssa Brito fan club, Madison Shipman might run for president. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just really appreciate how well 
suited her swing is to hit pitches low in the zone. And it's because of how quickly she gets her barrel turned back behind her, along with the power that she brings up there, but just her ability to hit pitches down and elevate them up in the air. And right there you can see Sitlali kind of go into an off speed up in the zone there. You see a lot of drop ball pitchers because they induce ground ball outs because majority of batters are going to roll over that pitch. But the way that her hand path is to get to the ball, the way that her barrel stays behind, she's able to elevate those low pitches. Down the count, one and two. And it could be because I could never hit a drop ball that <laughs> that's why I appreciate it even more when I see a batter that's very good so at doing jealousy, that. So it's jealousy, I think. Yeah, yeah there, there you go. That's a great way to describe it. One, two from Gutierrez. Two and two. It's inside, it's three and two. Of course. Not all about power for Brito. 16 home runs of this season. She had a squeeze bunt in the quarterfinal for Patty Gasso. Patty willing to try a little bit of everything with her lineup. Try to beat you into multiple styles and ways. We'll talk to her after this half inning. Brito comes through with a two out single to right. 3 1 Oklahoma. Coming into that at bat, Alyssa Brito was batting 324 with two outs on the season. Go ahead and raise that batting average again. A base hit and another RBI for Alyssa Brito. This is a drop ball that's inside. It is so difficult to get your hands inside of this pitch and drive it the opposite direction, but that's exactly what she does. Drives it all the way out there to center field to allow Ella Parker to score easily on that base hit and just how important it was for Ella Parker to advance to second base on that pass ball to be able to get over into scoring position. Fifth RBI of the tournament for Brito just follows up perfectly what you talked about and what you appreciated for Alyssa Brito and her approach at the plate. And typically that's a pitch that if you're, especially if you're not looking for it, then maybe you roll over it, maybe you get jammed up and hit a ground ball over to the left side of the infield. But with her bat path, she's actually able to somehow drive that pitch the opposite direction. Kinsey Hansen grounded in to a fielder's choice, brought in a run back in the first inning. One and one. Two and one. Two and two now to Hanson. Hansen way out in front on that swing. You're seeing Sit Lolly really start to mix speeds with that off speed drop or drop ball, that off speed rise ball. As we see Mac Morgan getting loose in that Texas bullpen. Two and two the count to Hanson. Three and two, snap throw down to first, getting back safely is Brito. Brito had her RBI single on a 3-2 pitch. Hanson ready to face a 3-2 pitch from Gutierrez. Here it comes. There it goes. In the gap, right center field, all the way down into the fence. Brito to third, she'll score. Hanson heading to third, here comes the throw. She is out at third. But it's an RBI for Kinsey Hanson to give Oklahoma a three-run lead. Hey, if you're a catcher, you're going for the triple when you got a chance. <laughs> Kinsey Hanson with just a clutch hit to the right side. Captain on this team coming through. Chip game and a chance to talk now with the Oklahoma head coach. Patty Gasso. Patty, I know you're a very much in the moment person, but 
This is your final Big 12 title game. Has that hit you at all, or are you just, I can tell by the look in your face, no, you're sorry. all about the I game. No, yeah, I'm all about the game. And I, I've said it, like the Big 12, Big 8 is where I started. So I've been in this conference for 30 years. So it will, I will feel it when it's over, but I just can't get caught up in that stuff right now. And coach, coming into this tournament, you even said that you felt like your team was playing more complete softball. What do you like that you're seeing from your offense today going up against Texas? Uh, they, they look like they're fighting, whether it's on the mound or they're at bats. The way they answered that run was big time. So I love their energy and I love what they're doing. Patty, we appreciate your time as always. 15-time Big 12 Coach of the Year. Of course, that goes back to the Big 8 days, as she mentioned. You talk about Big 12 history. We're looking at it with Oklahoma, and this is part of turning the page on that history here today with Texas and Oklahoma meeting this title game. I think you've even seen with her teams over the years, too, her just evolving to the different style of the game. I really think you're seeing that on both sides of the field today, specifically when it comes to the pitching staffs and how these coaches use all of the arms on their staff just don't see all that often that coaches are running out the same ace day in and day out, but really trying to play those matchups, use the stats to their advantage. Swinging at the first pitch is Bella Dayton, and she stays hot. Her fifth hit of the tournament. She's on to lead things off in the third here for the Longhorns. I know you can't get enough Caitlin Clark. Be sure to catch Full Court Press tomorrow on, on ABC, also on ESPN+. Plus. It's a four-part docu-series. It's a behind-the-scenes look into the lives of Caitlin Clark, South Carolina center Camila Cardoso, and UCLA guard Kiki Rice. See you tomorrow, 12.30 Eastern time on ABC. Ashton Maloney swings at the first pitch as well. She fouls it off for strike one. Maloney grounded to short her first time. Good pick by Hansen to keep Dayton at first, 101. that Texas put up against Baylor, the 14 runs, but it was really Ashton Maloney that got things started for them in the bottom of the first inning. Had a nice single down the left field line. It ended up advancing all the way over to third base on an air out left field. Maloney could not check her swing. She strikes out. Takes a pause to look at plate umpire Steve Gould. Disagrees, obviously. One away. Side swing here. Let's take a look to see if she checked. I think she went. I think that's a good call on that. Not by much, but another pitch down in the dirt from Maxwell that she's getting swings and misses on. Ball one to Mia Scott, who struck out her first time. She's got a couple of home runs in the tournament. Two of the nine hit by Texas. Grounded to first. Sanders gets the force at second. Two down. That play almost developed so quickly that it didn't give Alina Torres enough time to make it from the second base position all the way to first base to try to get that double play. Quick snap throw by Sidney Sanders at first base. One hopper off of the bat. Quick throw to Tiare. You could see Alina saying right there, she wasn't going to make it there in time. Don't throw the ball. <laughs> Martinez 0 for 1. Yeah. Fouls it off for strike one. Martinez, one of those players that got playing time right away upon arriving at Austin. Hit 346 as a freshman all of last season. A 12 all freshman team. Hit a home run against Oklahoma in the Big 12 tournament title game here a year ago. Had some good swings against them in their series earlier this year, too. Had a two out RBI double. I feel like her swing, she's been a little bit lower in her legs this year. 
has again been extremely consistent for the Longhorns. One and two. It's a really good pitch by Maxwell. That drop ball working low and inside to the lefty. She's not afraid to work the inside part of the plate to both the righties and the lefties. That drop ball almost worked its way behind Vivi Martinez. Martinez hooks it foul. And a good grab. Been a couple of those this week. I feel like we've seen the crowd cheer for some foul balls caught. Good defense on the field, good defense in the stands. And I know what you're going to say next. You're hoping that another ball makes its way up here into the booth, although it would have to be a pretty good shot to make why, it all the way up here. Why would I say that? So that we can see you make an incredible <laughs> grab in the Again? booth. Again? Another one? <laughs> Mike White hanging out down at third. We'll chat with the Texas head coach, the Big 12 coach of the year after this happening. One and two to count to Martinez. Two and two. Maxwell with four strikeouts so far this evening. Make it five. Martinez caught looking to retire the side. Oklahoma on top of the Big 12. Hey, Coach Mike White. Mike, just big picture on this season. I know the saying, ignorance is bliss. You have such a young lineup. How has youth helped your team be in the position where they are right now, regular season champs? Well, I think it all started last year. You know, we went deep into the postseason and uh, got a lot of experience. We even played down here in front of uh, 8,000 fans. So that was all good stuff you just can't practice. So I'm excited and we bring another good class this year. So you know, things are looking pretty good right now. And Coach, it felt like Sit Lolly really settled in back in the second inning, gave up a few hits in the third. What are you wanting to see from her moving forward? Forward. We continue to use the off speed, you know, and keep them off balance. So uh, uh, she's made a couple of mistakes in some critical positions, but uh, we haven't helped her out either. So, but I just hope she gets settles down and keeps working hard right here. Mike, appreciate it. Thank hey, you so thank much. Thank you. Hook him. Mike White, sixth season now as the Longhorns head coach. So you see Gutierrez with the three innings of work, five hits, four runs, three earns, four strikeouts. And you heard him saying he wants her to continue to use that off-speed pitch, and I'd imagine some of the mistakes may be just that drop ball, which is her go-to pitch, leaving it a bit too high in the zone. She really is effective when she's able to work the edges of the strike zone, especially facing a team like Oklahoma, a team that's already seen you this year. Really important for her to continue to work that low part of the zone with the drop ball and then be able to mix in the off-speed drop, the off-speed rise. One on one to freshman Cassidy Pickering popped out the second her first time two for four in the tournament. Both hits coming in the semifinal victory last night against BYU. Eight run fourth inning in that game for Oklahoma. That was the beginning for the Sooners as they bat here in the fourth against Texas. Two and two. Good take by Cassidy Pickering. That pitch on the outside part of the plate. She's another one that had some really good swings in that series against Texas earlier in the year. Actually had a double off of Sit Lolly in that series. Waves at that one. Gutierrez gets PN plus. One down for Alina Torres, who's over one. Rounded to third, it's a fair ball. Scott's high throw gets away. Heading to second is Torres. Mike White just talked about it. His team hasn't done much to help their starting pitcher. Torres will take it any way she can get it. Second error for the Longhorns. This is a play that absolutely has to be made. Mia Scott over at third base fields. This one quickly, it looked like the throw took Katie Stewart up just a bit. Moves over 
towards that third baseline to field it, fires it across the diamond. And it's a bit of a high throw, but I think that's something that needs to be caught by your first baseman. She got glove on it. I know it's a little bit up in the air, but you've got to try to come down with that one. She's caught in the middle, right? She's trying to keep her foot on the bag and get the outs, but in that split second, it's sailing on her. It's a throwing error on Scott. That's what's called by yeah, the, the official score. The throw is high, yes. definitely. And, and as a first baseman, you're just trying to get all the way up on your tippy toe to reach that ball while still keeping your foot on the base. This one is hooked foul and out of play. That's seven errors now for the Longhorns in this tournament. Their first two wins only went five innings. So it's 10 innings plus now this fourth inning that they've committed that many errors. You know, we talked about it earlier in this game where I felt that their defense had improved this year was the fact that their errors haven't come in bunches. Well, it seems like they're starting to come in bunches here in this Big 12 tournament. A little bit of a flashback to what you saw last year. Especially back last year in Super Regionals against Tennessee. Five errors in just one game against Tennessee to end the season. One and two the count to Sanders who struck out her first time. Called strike three, two down, six strikeouts now for Gutierrez. Sit Lolly still working these pitches both sides of the plate goes with the drop ball low let's see where it crosses here crosses at the knees would not be a pitch I'd want called against me if I'm in the batter's box but every pitcher out there wants that one called for them gets away from Atwood taking third is Torres with two down Tried to keep that one in front of her, but just skipped away too far. We've seen two runners now in this ball game advance an extra 60 feet because of the ball that skipped away from Atwood after hitting the dirt. Back up the middle, trying to pick it is Leanne Good, who's into the game at second base. She cannot, and the error proves costly again. Riley Boone comes through to put Oklahoma on top 5-1. Riley Boone is so good at looking like she's going to be completely fooled on a pitch up at the plate and yet still finding a way to make something happen. Completely out on her front side and she just lets go with that top hand to get on top of this ball. And Leanne Good went for the backhand up the middle, trying to stop her momentum as she went to field that one and it just skips by her. Now the Sooners with another run across and Sit Lolly doing her job in the circle, inducing some ground ball outs. Her defense just has to pick it up behind her and try to make some of these plays. It's a base hit and an RBI for Boone, her third hit of the series. Jada Coleman. There goes Boone. The throw is off the mark and Boone is in safely with a stolen base. Stolen base number 61 for Oklahoma as a team this season. Oklahoma likes to put people in motion. Looked like she left on time to me. Can be challenged and will be challenged here by Mike White. Steve Gould, the plate umpire, comes out and indicates that it's being challenged. Replay review being coordinated here in the stadium, so They'll take a look at it here on the press level. And the question would be, did Boone leave the bag before the pitch left the hand of Gutierrez? The season with that video review over at first base, when you're slowing it down frame by frame, it's so close, especially for a runner at first base, trying to time it up perfectly with the pitchers releasing the ball. That was a close one. From the first view, it looked like she left early, but then when we continued to slow it down, maybe that back toe stayed on the base just that split second longer. And again, when you get into using words like maybe, looks like, all that hedging, Absolutely. that's not enough to They're flip it around. They're looking for indisputable video evidence to change the call on the field. Coleman fouls it off and will walk it off. A couple of times in this at-bat that Jada Coleman's almost fallen to the ground on a swing. 
And Bradley Boone took off. Looked like a hit and run was on. The one two from Gutierrez. Another one in the dirt, and Coleman gets called for swinging at it and then throwing on the first to Atwood to Stewart to make sure of it. Give all American status to our typist who put all that in. Didn't even have enough time to read through it all. <laughs> so many good teams on that list, too. Of course, the one that jumps out to me, Miami of Ohio. Carly Spade, 36 home runs so far this season for the Red Hawks. They beat Louisiana to win the MAC championship. Excuse me, Ball State. Here's Katie Stewart with one down. Maxwell continues to work down, and that one caught a piece of Kinsey Hansen who needs a moment. She's all right. Foul tip down in the dirt. Ooh. Maybe that right thigh. That's what Kinsey tells everybody. Yeah, well, now, you know, remember that triple I almost had? <laughs> I'm not going to leg out a triple tonight after that. Stewart lays off, it's one to one. Freshman struck out in the second. Five strikeouts for Kelly Maxwell. Only trouble came in the second inning. Struck out Atwood and Stewart, but then walked Mitchell. And on a one-two pitch, Caden Henry had a triple to bring in the Texas run. Other than that, Maxwell has been on target. Doesn't get that call, and it's two and one. Really seems like all of her pitches have been working tonight against the Longhorns. We've seen the rise ball, we've seen the drop ball, we've seen her off speeds. Working all quadrants, not afraid to work inside to the righties and the lefties. Popped up. Torres, two down. Big day in the NBA to pumped up for OKC in the NBA playoffs. Ball one to Jolie Mitchell, who walked and scored the only Texas run. Grounded to shorts. Jennings to first, a one, two, three inning for Kelly Maxwell. We've been in Oklahoma City, the Big 12 Tournament Championship. Right now it's Oklahoma on top as we go to the fifth inning, ball one to Ella Parker. Parker two for two tonight with two runs scored. Seven for eight in the tournament with six runs scored. And five runs batted in. Good pitch in there for a strike, it's one on one. It's an example of that off-speed drop ball that she's gonna throw, trying to change things up quite literally to Ella Parker because she has been on fire throughout this Big 12 tournament. Must be seeing the ball about the size of a beach ball coming into her with the way she's swinging the bat. Fouled off, it's one and two. Parker had a three-run home run in game three of the Oklahoma State Series last Sunday. Help break things open, give Oklahoma a win. They won that game, they've won two games here at OG Field, Devon Park. This one is lifted to left, playable for Bella Dayton, one down here in the fifth, ABC. Here's Tiari Jennings, who's one for two. Jennings also homered in game three of that Oklahoma State series. shot out to center field. I don't know if that ball got above about 12 feet off of the ground because she hit it so hard. 12 to 15 feet, maybe. Oh, and two. Of course, on a personal note, Maddie and I were in Norman for the Super Regional last year. 
calling the Clemson Oklahoma series and one of the wildest postseason games in my memory Jennings had the game winning home run in the ninth inning two home runs against Clemson in that game too. of course Kinsey Hansen had that two out two strike three run home run to tie the game at seven in the seventh <laughs> the, the list of crazy things that happened in that game is McKen so long Mackenzie Clark with a home run yes. in that game for Clemson I mean back and forth all game long between those two teams Jennings was one of the stars as she's been throughout her Oklahoma career a star for the Sooners it was the 16 seed going up against the one seed in the Super Regional. That game literally had us on the edges of our seat for about, what, four hours that game yes. went on back and forth between these two. <laughs> and it went by fast. Usually <laughs> it's a four-hour softball game. <laughs> it takes too long, but that one could have gone another four hours. A couple other things. Heinz Field finale, remember that piece of it? Patty Gasso's birthday. What better birthday gift can you have than a <laughs> nine-inning win? Sent you on to the Women's College World Series, and of course they came here to the stadium and won their third straight national championship. Jennings battling against Gutierrez. Count evens up at two and two. You see, it's all coming back to me now. We saw eight different pitchers in that ball game too. Four pitchers for each team. Ground into third. Scott throws a strike to first, one away, two away. Hard here in the fifth. Another one of those off speeds. Good pitch by Gutierrez, getting Tiare way, way out in front on that swing, trying to get her on that front foot. Got it off the end of the bat. And now again, you're having to deal with Alyssa Brito and the swing that she had on that drop ball inside in her last at bat, driving it the opposite direction. Wouldn't be surprised if we see a heavy dose of the off speeds here to Brito. Ball one. And we saw it before, and you've talked about it quite a few times. One of the things that you appreciate so much about both these teams, certainly Oklahoma's approach at the plate, is working with the pitch that's offered. Hitting their pitch first and foremost, but if it's a pitch that demands being sent the other way, they will do it, and they do it so well. Raise off of that one. And it is 2 and 0. I think you're seeing, for the most part, the right handed batters going up against Sitlali today, trying to overemphasize getting behind the pitch and driving it the opposite direction. And one that's going to help you with the drop ball, but it's also going to help you with the changes in speeds that Gutierrez brings out there. Guido's a bit out in front on that pitch, but really, like you said, both sides of the field, both of these offenses, I feel like throughout this season, have done a nice job of having athletic adjustments with their swings and reacting to the pitch as it's released out of the hand of the pitchers. Yeah! It's one thing to have a game plan, but it's another thing to adjust to the pitch as you see it coming out of her hand. And all of these hitters are, are so good, they can easily hit a pitch that's one to two balls off of the plate. And you've seen them have some of those athletic swings even here today. I think about that Riley Boone swing, way out in front, still manages to get a base hit on it. Burrito fouls that one off. When these two teams met in this time of game a year ago, Oklahoma won 6-1. It was a 1-1 game in the fourth inning. Brito had the go-ahead RBI. Nicole May picked up the win. Haley Lee, the most outstanding player of last year's Phillips 66 Big 12 Softball Championship. Hot shot foul. Going back to what you talked about earlier today, Gutierrez is dealing with an Oklahoma team that Patty Gasso says is just back into a more attacking, aggressive, strong-minded approach. Everything that you would use to describe Oklahoma through the years is on its way back. Brito can't get that pitch. Couldn't check her swing, and Gutierrez has a 1-2-3 fifth inning. 
at the end of four and a half to be on another level. She feels confident about it, just telling her to throw a competitive pitch every time you swing your arm. And Maxwell has done the job here today. You can see getting ahead of batters has been a key. 13 first pitch strikes. When you're getting ahead, that's when you start to get hitters to expand the zone or even guess that a certain pitch is coming. When you look at her on the entire season, her swing and miss heat map, you can see swings and misses up in the zone with that red and also down in the zone with that drop ball and the off speed that she's going to throw. One and two to Henry, who brought in the only Texas run with a triple back in the second inning. You see that blue tape on the chest protector for Kinsey Hansen. We have seen the vertical blue for Oklahoma. We've seen the horizontal strike as well. That one gets away. Talk to Jen Rocha about it, the pitching coach. Motor preference was the phrase used to describe what is happening with those stripes there. And each pitcher has a different motor preference. So you're going to see a blue vertical line. You might even see a red horizontal line of tape for Peyton Monticelli when she comes into the game. And I guess to sum it up, the pitchers aren't even looking at it. They don't realize they see it, but it's being processed and it helps them command their pitches a little bit better. When you when you see the tape, you would think that maybe it's a target for the pitchers, but Coach Jen Rocha said that that's not the point of it. It's not to be a target, but really just to get them to focus in on each individual pitch. That just missed. Henry's aboard to start things here. <laughs> There's Jen. <laughs> that reaction, she can't believe that this pitch was not called for a strike. Oof. Kenzie Hansen thought it was a strike. She was gearing up to throw it to third base. Did not miss by much. But Coach Rocha does such a good job of developing arms throughout their careers. Did that at Florida, now doing that here at Oklahoma. Big swing by Lee Ann Good. Her first at bat came on for Alyssa Washington. Now, Coach Rocha did say that I would be a horizontal line, I believe is what she told me. Now, I don't know what that means for me. It was a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how I took it. Nothing against the vertical line, people. They just Now, would it be red or blue? That that we don't know. Maybe I need you to start definitely see, You definitely see red if we go back to your point. If you course. see Eric with a line of horizontal <laughs> tape, just know it's for. Please don't put it across my mouth. That was going to be the next <laughs> thing that we talked about. <laughs> I know you too well. Strategic placing. Yes. 0-2 to count. Too good. At the very least, Texas trying to make Maxwell work a little bit here. Henry worked the walk. Goods down the count 0 2, trying to fight. That's up high. It's 1 2. Bottom of the lineup trying to make things happen here. Turn the lineup over against Patty Gasso's team. I would not say a four run lead is a comfortable lead against a Texas team hitting 383 on the season. Maxwell's been locked in. Here's the one two. Gets the strikeout, one away. Kinsey Hansen really having to work hard back behind the plate. And because Texas keeps swinging at these pitches down in the dirt, and if they're going to keep swinging at them, you just keep throwing them there. Mixing speeds goes with this pitch, working its way down in the zone. And again, the, these swings it, that you're seeing from Texas throughout the lineup. Just tell me, one, that Maxwell's pitches are really moving up there, and they're having a hard time picking it up out of the hand. Two, she's getting ahead. And three, you're seeing Texas start to guess that she's going to bring pitches into the zone. Strike one to Bella Dayton. Dayton has been a tough out, stretched her hitting streak to 10 games with a single back in the third inning. 
She's five for six in the tournament. Yeah. Oh and two. Bit of down bite on that drop off, swinging over top of it. Oklahoma fans up on their feet here. 0-2 coming from Maxwell. Goes back with the same pitch again, just inches it outside of the zone, just a little bit more from the swing and miss prior. Another one of these drop balls with great late bite on it down in the zone, but because she's a left-handed pitcher, it's also moving away from the lefty Bella Dayton. Really good looking pitch out of the hand of Maxwell. Strike one to Maloney, who's 0 for 2 tonight. Leading hitter on this Texas team came into play tonight, hitting 437. Tap to the right side, moving over quickly as Torres to first to Sanders for the out to it. Last weekend, here's one of those seniors, Kinsey Hansen. Hansen doubled in the third, brought in a run, brought in a run on a fielder's choice in the first. This is grounded to Scott the third. One down here in the sixth inning. A reminder, Sunday night baseball, it's the Mets and the Braves. Tomorrow night, starting at 7 Eastern on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and ESPN Radio. Our coverage begins at 6 Eastern with baseball tonight. Sunday night countdown. He's a star. That guy's just a star right now. I think he's getting word from his people that he's a star on national television. That was pitch number 100 for Sitlali Gutierrez, who just feels like watching this game, she deserves better than what the scoreboard shows right now tonight for Texas. She's definitely pitching better than what you're seeing on the scoreboard, that's for sure. She's thrown some really good pitches. You can see right there, that's that off-speed drop ball. So she's mixing speed, she's mixing location. There might have been a couple back in that third inning, pitches that she would like to get back, maybe drop balls that hung up in the zone a bit too far, but for the most part, she is keeping Oklahoma in the yard. She's working the outside part of the zone. She's getting ground ball outs, which is exactly what she wants when she's out there. She's also racked up quite a few strikeouts, eight strikeouts so far today, but her defense just has not been able to consistently make the plays behind her. Two and two the count now to Pickering. 0 for two tonight. Cassidy all freshman team selection. One of nine Sooners to earn all conference honors. Gutierrez gets the strikeout. That's her ninth two now. Second strikeout to Pickering today too on basically identical pitches on the outside part of the zone. Struck her out on a drop ball away in the fourth and struck her out on a pitch away here in the sixth. Two down for Torres, 0 for 2 tonight with the run scored. Strike one. Oklahoma has won four of the last five Big 12 tournaments, eight in all, as they play the Big 12 tournament championship game for a final time, as does Texas. It's out of play, it's 0-2. Big 12 hoping to be well represented in the NCAA tournament. Texas, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Baylor, all certain for the NCAA tournament. BYU, I think, should be a lock. They beat Oklahoma State in the quarterfinal rounds. That was a major upset here in championship week. Second win over Oklahoma State this season. They beat Oklahoma, did BYU this season. UCF, 30 wins, 12 coming in Big 12 play. They were fifth place in the Big 12. 
pretty good resume. Kansas, 28 wins. Texas Tech, 29 wins. It's in the dirty two and two. Kansas with a sweep over Baylor earlier this year. Had a win over UCF. They're a team that's gotten some big wins on their resume so far this season. A lot of really strong teams, a lot of really strong strength of schedules, I would say, in the Big 12 this year. Oklahoma State was surprising here, one and done here in the Big 12 tournament. Of course, they won that series at Norman last week for the first time winning a series in Norman since 1993, but they've dropped back-to-back -back games after winning 10 in a row. And it seemed they were a team that was putting everything together at the right time, too, with the pitching and the hitting against Oklahoma. Rito swung on a miss, back-to-back -back strikeouts. A career-high 10 strikeouts for Sitlali Gutierrez. Hoping her teammates could come back ages <laughs> in the field. Avery Hodge is at second base. I see Hannah Kaur heading out to left field. Selection special on Sunday regionals, then super regionals, and then the Women's College World Series right back here in Oklahoma City. How about Charlotte, though, winning their first tournament title? They started off the season upsetting Florida State. That's how Charlotte started off this 2024 season. Mm. Sam Gress in the circle for them. Another pitcher that you want to keep your eye on. Two and one, the captain Mia Scott leaving things off. And of course in left, Riley Boone moves over from left to right. That settles things defensively. Still to come, Pac-12 championship game at Stanford. Top seed UCLA, number six seed Utah. Utah knocking off Stanford in the semifinals 2-1. Of course, Utah will join the Big 12 starting on July 1st. <laughs> so playing in the Pac-12 tournament, as is UCLA, as we all know. That, that's it for the Pac-12 tournament. Much different than what we're seeing here. We're seeing these two teams play in this tournament for the last time. But you will still see a strong Big 12 going forward. <laughs> Utah coming in the lead. I'm going to need a flow chart to keep track of <laughs> you don't conference have realignment one? for next year. You didn't year. have one for I, the I'm last four it, years? I am keeping it straight for this year, and then as soon as the World Series ends, I'm going to start my, probably I'm going to need to take up an entire wall of the flow chart to make sure I get it straight. So mine covers a wall. Oh, there really we go. Good. See? Yeah, yep. Very effective. <laughs> UCLA. They were down 4 nothing in the semi semis, by the way. They beat Arizona 6-5, six-run fifth inning. Yeah. Oh. You see Maya Brady and UCLA taking on Utah coming up at the top of the hour. UCLA's had a great season, too, especially after the way they got started, getting run-ruled in back-to-back -back games, losing every game to Big 12 teams to start off the year. So you see Maya Brady there. Back-to-back -back player of the year honors in the pack. 0-2, oh, the count to Martinez. 0 for 2 tonight. inside and a mistake, a rare mistake by Maxwell. She hits Martinez with an 0-2 pitch. Wonder if maybe coming into this inning that Texas was going to try to be a little bit more patient up at the plate, try to make Kelly Maxwell work out there. Vivi Martinez right there on the chalk line, toes on that chalk, just gets hit in that right thigh. Two runners. Ball one to Reese Atwood. The player you would want on the plate for Texas in a moment like this. A school record 22 home runs on the season. 86 RBI. 0 for 2 tonight. This one is line to center field. Reaching up and making the grab is Coleman. The defense there for the Sooners, one away. 
What a play by Jada Coleman out in center field. Off the bat, I thought this was a base hit. No doubt, smoked by Reese Atwood, Atwood out to center field. And you can just see the way that Jada Coleman actually has to shift her footwork, working back on that line drive, extends right at the last minute and robs Atwood of a base hit. Her first step was in. It is so hard when the ball is hit on the line right at you in center field, but she adjusted and athletic enough to reach up and make the grab. Way and having to deal with Katie Stewart up at the play, but the senior with a ton of experience for Oklahoma in the circle. And she's gonna throw a little bit of everything. One thing that you're gonna see her do is pound the strike zone. She's going to attack that zone in different quadrants. She's got a little bit of a drop ball, has a rise, has a curve, has a screw ball. Oh, and two to Katie Stewart. Back-to-back -back strikes to start off. Stewart, mid to upper 60, so some pretty good velocity there. Like I said, working all four quadrants with a variety of different pitches that she throws, but the confidence that she has in that changeup, she will throw it in any count. One and two now to Stewart, struck out in the second, popped out in the fourth. Four RBI in the tournament. And the dirt stopped by Hansen, two and two. May's last appearance was last Saturday against Oklahoma State. Brent five gave up eight hits, including three home runs. So perhaps trying to get her back on track here. But coming in in a big spot in the Big 12 championship game. 2-2. Fly ball right side, foul ground, and drifting back is Sanders. Two down. A big out there for Nicole May as she enters the pitcher circle in this ball game. Starts her off with pitches on the inside part of the plate. So this is back-to-back -back screw balls to get Stewart behind 0-2. Tries to get her to chase at a rise ball up and out of the zone. Works a drop ball away and then throws the curve ball outside and gets a nice easy fly ball over to her first baseman for out number two. Ball one to Jolie Mitchell, who has scored the Texas run tonight. She walked in the second, scored on the triple by Henry. Grounded to short in the fourth. Three for five in the tournament. One and one. Also on the staff for Oklahoma, Carly Keeney, the Liberty transfer, Kirsten Deal. Kirsten pitched. Yesterday for Oklahoma, she was one out from a no-hitter Friday night against BYU. Could have been a five-inning no-hitter. Two and one the count now to Mitchell. Two and two. Sooner fans getting a little louder here in Oklahoma City. Out of play. Had a nice job coming into this game, getting ahead of the batters too. Really, Texas, both righties that she's had to face, neither of them have gone after that screwball that's been thrown in there for strikes early in the count. They've been chasing after pitches on the outside part of the plate. Another 2-2 for May. Swung on and missed. Nicole May comes on, gets out of the jam. Game 5-1 as we head to the seventh. 8-9-1 for the Sooners. Sidney Sanders leads off 0 for 2 tonight. A couple of strikeouts against Gutierrez. Gutierrez with a career-high 10 strikeouts tonight against Oklahoma. Ah! 
Line shot to left. Down for a base hit all the way to the fence. Sanders heading to second with a leadoff double. Throughout this ball game, Sydney Sanders had been on the receiving end of some calls low in the zone with the drop ball. She got another one to start off this at bat, and then she decides to expand her zone, go after a pitch outside, actually comes around the swing and drives it straight down that left field line for a leadoff double for the Sooners in the sixth inning. Seventh, excuse me. 14th double for Sanders. She'll leave the game for a pinch runner as Maya Bland comes on to run. Correction, third double of the year for Sanders. 13 homers for Sydney. That's been the extra base hit of choice for her this season <laughs> and many of her Oklahoma teammates. Here's Riley Boone, one for two tonight, singled in a run in the four. One on one. Gutierrez trying to keep it a four-run game. And hope the bats can come through in the bottom half of the seventh. Boone offered at it. Down on the count, one and two. Boone just doing whatever she can to try to put something in play. Again, way out in front on the swing to get to one strike. And then tries to lay down a bunt unsuccessfully for two strikes, infield still shaded in with her up the plate. Grounded too short, the throw on the first by Martinez for the out. One down for Jada Coleman. A couple of strikeouts tonight for Jada Coleman. Both of them on pitches low in the zone. One was looking back in the third, one was swinging in the fourth, or called swinging in the fourth inning. Fly ball hit deep to left in foul ground moving over is Dayton to make the catch. Two down. Well, you look at the scoreboard and you see five runs on seven hits, but three of those five runs are earned, two unearned, thanks to two Texas errors. And 10 strikeouts for Gutierrez, a career high for her, that's a season high in strikeouts for an Oklahoma team. Gutierrez has really looked solid in the circle and bouncing back after Oklahoma's been able to put up a couple of runs. The times that her defense has made some mistakes, but it really felt like it fueled Oklahoma's offense with the air to start off the game. Jada Coleman reaching first base on the air over at first, and that just seemed to spark the rest of the offense. Because at that point, you feel like you've got the momentum on your side. In the dirt to Parker, it's 2-0. and And this will tell you, in some ways, how effective Gutierrez has been. Ten strikeouts tonight. She struck out Coleman twice tonight. Coleman came into this game with five total strikeouts all season long. <laughs> she's looked really cool, or calm, cool, and collected out in the circle, too. And I just think she's done a really nice job of working the off-speed pitches. She's got two different off-speeds that she's going to throw. That off-speed drop ball and that off-speed spinny rise up in the zone. A couple of times the drop maybe left a bit up, but for the most part, working the edges and keeping the ball on the ground. That's the goal against Oklahoma. But overall, Oklahoma, history will show they make you pay for mistakes. It's not just the errors, missing her spots on a couple of pitches like you mentioned. It's been costly. One. Two and one. Parker two for three tonight, seven for nine in the tournament. There's even been some plays that don't necessarily go down as errors in the scorebook that have been mistakes by the Texas defense. Uh, defenders may be breaking the wrong way on a ball that should have been played or at least should have been knocked down. 
even the L. Parker base hit to second base in the first inning, too. I felt like that might have been a ball that if yes. you charge a little harder, you get that out over at first base. This is hit well to left, slicing into foul ground and enough room for Dayton to put it away. That will do it for the Sooners in the seventh. Last chance for the regular season champs in the Big 12. Bottom of the seventh coming up for the seventh inning. Bottom half of the order coming up for Texas, too. It's Kate Henry that's going to lead things off in the bottom of the seventh. So she was the one that got the RBI earlier this game, that triple to center field. Bottom of the order has their two hits to them. Yep. Henry's got the triple, and Dayton's got a single. Swinging at the first pitch and fouling it off is the freshman strike one. Tripled in the run in the second, was left stranded at third, and then walked leading off the fifth. The last hit for Texas was Dayton's single in the third. Maxwell walked two and hit one since then. But laid down and it will roll into foul ground. The pitching has really been outstanding for Oklahoma today, starting with Kelly Maxwell. And I know we talked about it a few innings ago, maybe at the beginning of the game, and looking at Oklahoma's season as a whole, and if I'm an opponent, what am I looking at? What am I going to try to go in and get the win against the Sooners after? And it's because not having dominant strikeout pitching. Well, Kelly Maxwell said, you know what? I heard what you said, <laughs> and I'm going to go out here, and I'm going to strike out seven of these Longhorn batters tonight. That gives her 119 strikeouts on the season. In 114 innings of work. And really just felt dominant throughout the game. Felt like she was in control of the at-bats. That's fouled off by Henry. We'll do the one-two again. Really pitched well. Had command of all her pitches, was working both sides of the plate, up and down in the zone. Working ahead, too. A yes. lot of first pitch strikes for her. And once she's able to do that, then she throws the rise up at the helmet. Then she throws the drop ball down in the dirt. Hanson with the pump to throw it around the horn. May didn't get the call. It's two and two. Like it didn't those miss those much. aren't Sooners you're hearing <laughs> from the crowd. <laughs> Ooh, not missing by much. A screwball outside to the lefty Henry. One away. Second strikeout for Nicole May. Two strikeouts. Both of them have been via the changeup for May. Great late Hello. movement on this pitch down in the zone. Pulling the string on it. Gets her thinking she's going to go back to the screwball away. Maxwell cheering on her teammate out there in the circle. Leanne Good struck out against Maxwell back in the fifth. One one. These two teams will be, of course, two of the highest seeded teams in the tournament. The question is, there's only one overall number one seed. It was Oklahoma last year. Texas, when you look at what they've done all season long, consistently great, winning the regular season championship in the Big 12. Is that enough if they don't come back in this game to say they should be the overall number one seed in the tournament? Or does this victory here for Oklahoma where they knock off Texas, push them to the top? One, two. Two down. When you see the way that Nicole May is pitching tonight, you can just tell that this is a team that is coming together at the right time of the season. Since she's entered this ball game now, after the flyout to first base, three strikeouts in a row for Nicole May. Bella Dayton with two down. Popped up. Right side of the infield. Ball game over. For the ninth 
and final time, Oklahoma Big 12 champions. that you saw from Oklahoma from the very first pitch of this ball game. Kelly Maxwell setting the tone in the circle. Seven strikeouts against an extremely tough Texas Longhorns offense. Nicole May coming into the ball game and finishing it off, but it was Kelly Maxwell that really got things going for the Sooners. Kelly Maxwell tonight's player of the game brought to you by Phillip 66. She gets the win here and she is a Big 12 champion for a second time. Was a champion with Oklahoma State two years ago and now a champion with the Oklahoma Sooners here in 2024. Of course, Oklahoma hopes this is just the first of two celebrations they'll have here on this field here in the spring. We'll talk to the winners when we come back. They are the Big 12 champions again. The Oklahoma Sooners win it back here to OKC in a moment. Oh, if there's one thing Oklahoma knows how to do, it's how to celebrate Big 12 tournament championships. They have done it for a ninth time here, winning in Oklahoma City. Kelly Maxwell gets the win. Oklahoma wins at 5-1. We are joined now by the head coach, Patty Gasso. Patty, I'm not going to ask you to rank your Big 12 tournament championships, but I just want to ask you about this one and how sweet it is because you guys were looking for that sharpness, or you were for your team, and I don't think you could ask for much more than what you saw here in these three games here in Oklahoma City, could you? No, not at all. I mean, we were we were really hoping for this kind of game, so really excited about uh, just a team effort that we had today. From the mound, I love the way these two work together. Um, Nicole May came in to finish. Um, just top to bottom, lineup did a good job. And coach, talking about your offense and a couple of players that are seniors in your program between Tiara Jennings and Alyssa Brito coming through with a couple of clutch hits. What is it like to be able to have players like that to come through in those moments and those big moments for you guys in a championship oh, setting? It makes, it, it's fun and it makes <laughs> coaching easy because I mean, that's, they live for those moments and they always have been. So it's it's been such a joy to coach this team and, and these seniors, I can't even, I don't want to get started because if I get started, it's going to be ugly. So um, I'm just, I'm really proud of them and proud how they've gotten through a tough time of the season to be standing here with this trophy right now. Well, what can you tell us about the new kid on the block, Ella Parker? What a <laughs> tournament that she had for you guys. Yeah, Dad, she's going to be something, she's already something very special, <laughs> but she's got uh, some wonderful years ahead of her. So I'm really excited for them kind of handing the torch over to these freshmen. Patty, congratulations on another and a final, of course, Big 12 Tournament Championship. Now, now I feel it. I know. Thank you, guys. I asked you too <laughs> early, Patty, but I can <laughs> tell. Good. Thank you, Thank guys. you so much. Appreciate it. Patty Gasso, head coach of the Big 12 Tournament Champions again, and Oklahoma finding their stride at the right time. And she said it, just a complete team win. The competitiveness that we saw from the beginning of the game. Kelly Maxwell, outstanding in the circle, dominant, I will.
this season with that video review over at first base when you're slowing it down frame by frame. It's so close, especially for a runner at first base, trying to time it up perfectly with the pitchers releasing the ball. That was a close one from the first view. It looked like she left early, but then when we continued to slow it down, maybe that back toe stayed on the base just that split second longer. And again, when you get into using words like maybe, looks like, all that hedging, Absolutely. that's not enough to They're flip it around. They're looking for indisputable video evidence to change the call on the field. Coleman fouls it off and will walk it off. A couple of times in this at bat that Jada Coleman's almost fallen to the ground on a swing. And Riley Boone took off, looked like a hit and run was on. One two from Gutierrez. Another one in the dirt, and Coleman gets called for swinging at it and then throwing on the first at Atwood to Stewart to make sure of it. 